When replacing the skew motor, you need to leave the dish stowed and then remove the back cover. It's a lot easier to do these screws down here when the dish is folded down. This cover comes off. Try not to tear the gasket when you do it. The gasket likes to stay either on one side or the other and you kind of have to let it be however it wants to be. The skew motor is now exposed, but we're going to run the dish up to the to the calibrate elevation position so that we can get to the screws on the bottom. It just makes it a little easier if you do that. Don't unplug anything yet. Just leave everything all plugged in, and we're going to run an elevation calibration on this, which is something that you need to know how to do anyway. Okay, here's how to do the elevation calibration on a WineGuard Traveler. Press and hold the power button in for two seconds, and then release it and press and hold the enter button till you see the enter user menu. Hit the select button to select yes. Hit enter. Hit the select button to scroll down till, you the, till the asterisk is by installation and hit enter. The password for this is 0000, so you hit enter four times. Now you're in the installation menu. You want to hit select to get it down to calibrate EL till the asterisk is by it. And then hit the enter button. It says calibrate EL, yes. Get the asterisk over by the yes and hit enter. Now the dish is going to move up to the hard stop position, which is the dish folded all the way back. Almost sounds like it's pointed at the sky. The system will then ask you, is the dish against the hard stop? The answer is yes, so you change it the select to, to where the asterisk is in front of the yes, and you hit enter. And then it says calibrate EL success. Hit enter once. This is what will happen when you do a lower dish operation. It'll do it about 90 degrees at a time, so it should be standing straight up when this is completed. And then I like to lower the dish back down to get it, which will move it about 90 degrees lower. So hit lower antenna, hit the select over to the yes, and hit enter. And then it says lower antenna in progress. This is what it'll look like after you do the lower one time from the uh, hard stop. Now we're going to do this so we can get up to these screws up here which actually hold the skew motor in place. Now before removing the power wires from the skew motor, you want to make very sure that you've unplugged your power supply from your control box or unplugged it from the wall so there's no power. There's going to be a ring fall out of here as long as well as the motor coming loose when you take the last one out. The ring is a spacer that sets the angle perfectly on the skew motor. Unplug the skew motor by pushing down on the tab on top and remove the skew motor. While you've got the skew motor off, always check and make sure that the bearings are free and moving. The bearing is, is tight enough that there's no wobble in it, but it's free enough to turn easily so there's no binding or anything. There is a hard stop there and a hard stop there. So kind of center it back up 
And when you put the motor back in, make sure you get the wedge shaped the correct way. And then when you're putting this in, sometimes you got to kind of move this motor a little bit, or this uh, uh, skew a little bit so that the gears line up with the motor and it makes it a little easier to install. Putting the skew motor in is very easy. Make sure and grab the ring. There's a wedge shape to it. It's thicker toward the back where the motor is and thinner toward the front where the gear is. And it slides up in there, the wire out of the way. And it slides up in there. And then you have to start screws through the bottom holes. It's a little tricky getting all of the screws to line up the poles, the bracket, everything, the motor, get one started and then you can go on ahead and finish putting it all together. And yeah, even the guy that does it all the time has a hard time getting the screws started once in a while. And that's it. It's all installed. Everything's good to go. We'll stow it and then we'll put the cover back on. Now go around to this side and plug the motor back in. The little clip on the top of the connector goes to the top here. Try not to bend or pry too much back and forth on the circuit board connector when you're putting it back on and it should clip on very easily. Be careful this little ring on the top of here is very fragile. It doesn't like to be have any pressure put on it. It snaps very very easily. Now we're going to reinstall the cover back on here. Let the hand start the screws with your fingers just to make sure that they're threading in properly because they do get cross-threaded sometimes and they are a self-tapping screw type so it, it's easy to get them cross-threaded as they thread into this aluminum. If you stow it, yeah, I'm going to have to stow it before I can get those. It's easier to get to those screws on the bottom. a little bit tight because it just threaded in a little bit differently than it did the first time. Now this is all put back together again. You can go on ahead and do a um, exit the menu and get out of there and your dish should be all ready to go when you the next time that you power it on 
it should go through its full uh, calibration routine and run like normal. This is what a normal search routine looks like. The power up and the calibration and everything that it does before it starts searching for satellites. Some software versions it will go up and it will actually look at the last known location of the satellite before it calibrates and some of them it will go into immediate calibration. Okay, this dish went into its elevation calibration. Now it's calibrating the azimuth, which is the rotation at the bottom, and the skew, which is up on the top. The skew will turn to about 90 degrees, and then it'll go back to center. Some versions it'll go across to the other side, but most of them it'll just go back to center. The dish will turn more than 360 degrees and then it will go spin back all the way around back to its start position and resume searching for the satellite. If you want to see what it does and how it works with that ring that turns so it can go more than 360 degrees, watch my video about the bearing, about a loose bearing in the Weingard Traveler, and I show you how to tighten it up and make things work a little bit better if you're having a problem with it going off satellite in the wind and things like that where the turret base is very, very loose. Now it's spun back to its location that it started at. It's going to go down to a normal uh, search elevation and start searching.